Hey guys, we're doing something a little different with air conditioning today. We have a Coyote DK5310 uh, hydrostatic tractor here. It's still under warranty. The Coyote dealer is actually bringing it to me. Uh, they don't have AC equipment. They brought it to me about a month ago. They replaced the overhead evaporator. Uh, we just charged it up for them. They uh, released it to the customer. I'm not sure how long the customer had it. It quit cooling again. Supposedly now it has a new condenser and a new compressor, but it still doesn't work, but they never brought it back to me to charge it up again. So I'm not exactly sure the whole storyline through all of that. Um, so we're gonna start from scratch and we're going to just connect our uh, recovery machine up to it. If there's pressure, we'll recover out, see what's in there, because um, they may have you know, charged it up with a blow can or something, which if that's the case, they didn't evacuate it, they didn't pull the air out. Um, the machine, our recovery machine, it'll self-purge any air out if uh, we do suck in some air, so that's not a big deal. If it's empty, we'll pull a vacuum on it, um, we'll hook up the nitrogen, and we'll fill it up and we'll look, actually it's a forming gas, it's 5% hydrogen, 95% nitrogen, and we have a special detector, we'll look for leaks. At the same time, we'll monitor pressure drop with that system and see if we're uh, losing any of that pressure because there's gotta be more to the story that we're not getting, so we're just gonna have to figure it out. I do have the bucket or the loader elevated. I have a support jack, you know, just in case something collapses. I have the, uh, the brush guard folded down just to give myself a little more access. Last time I didn't do any of that and I was just kinda struggling to work around it. Um, on this system, we have multiple layers of stuff up here, and I'm not quite sure why. The debris screen is only in front of the radiator. And if we look down in here, let me grab some light. There is quite a bit of debris in front of that condenser already. And I'm not sure how long they've been driving it since they replaced the condenser and the compressor or how they charged it since then, but they've driven it enough to at least do some mowing operations and get that to plug up again. Now looking down in here, the compressor does look fairly new, but that line our uh, suction line on the compressor looks pretty oily and dusty. There's no service cap on the low side, which I know I put a service cap back on that. Um, the line is kind of dirty and nasty all the way to where it meets rubber back in there. So I'm going to clean off that service port first before I hook the machine up because I don't want all that crap getting in my service couplers. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have air in the system. On our high side, we're probably around 120. We have a little better resolution on our low side gauge here, 115. 115 would be 96 degrees. Now, we're probably only around 85 degrees ambient outside right now. And the tractor hasn't really been run long, so there might be a little bit of air in there, but not you know anything drastic. We'll go ahead and start recovering. Actually, before we recover, let's go ahead and just fire up the tractor, turn on the air conditioning, see what our pressures do. Okay, we have our overhead controls. Um, blower is on high, AC shows on, we're on face, we're on full cold. Um, the air coming out is not cold at all. Um, it's quite warm. And I did not hear a compressor kick on. So let's go look at the machine and check our pressures. So I came out to look at the pressures and immediately noticed that the compressor wasn't spinning. Um, the belt's not spinning at all. And that's when I noticed that the, the belt has actually broken. The belt has snapped. And that's why our compressor's not spinning and that's why we don't have any AC. So now we have to figure out why the belt snapped. So it doesn't matter how much refrigerant's in this system, it's not gonna work if the belt's broken. So the question is, why did the belt break? So that pulley's free, everything feels fine there. I'm just gonna go ahead and recover the refrigerant to find out if we do have a leak. So the AC pulley idler bearing here is good, it's freewheeling fine. But that compressor's locked up. Um, so something happened if they did replace this compressor, maybe they didn't check the oil charge. Um, I don't know, something is wrong internal of this compressor. 
So I think that we are going to have to get another compressor. We may even want to disassemble the roof and just blow out all the oil in the system and start over with a fresh charge of oil. Um, this may be a, an oil drain. If we flip it over, we can drain out and see how much oil comes out of this compressor. But yeah, I cannot, I, oh, it can turn backwards. But if I turn it forward, it locks up right there. But I can, oh, and that's as far as it goes. So yeah, this thing's, the compressor locked up, snapped the belt. I'll go ahead and let the machine finish processing. Um, it's gotta clear itself internally before it you know, sucks down the, the vehicle so it can measure everything properly. And we'll see what we recover. I'll have to go look up to see what we charged it with last time because a lot of these off-road vehicles don't have a sticker. I wish they did, but they don't. Um, otherwise, I'll call the Coyote dealer in and ask how much this one takes. So we'll be back here shortly to find out how much this thing actually recovered. So we're almost done recovering. You know, we're, we're almost to six-tenths of a pound. Our pressures are about zero. Now, it will take a second to get all of the refrigerant out. There's gonna be some trapped in the oil. Since the system wasn't running, this won't take too long because there shouldn't be you know, any solidified or cold spots in the uh, refrigerant system. So, uh, we probably won't see much more than that. I looked up our records. We put 1.25 in it last time it was serviced. It had 578 hours on it. It has 632 hours on it now. Hey, don't mind the glare, I'll get you guys a better shot here in a minute, but um, I got valves closed on this. We're at zero PSI. I pulled the system into a vacuum. So once I connect the hoses, we should see a vacuum show up here. I could have hooked one of the uh, hoses up from the manifold set here and continue to pull vacuum and actually evacuate my manifold gauge set. But I'm not too concerned about it. Um, I did have both of these manifold ports open. That's why both sides went into a vacuum. Not that you can see that, there's a glare. But both sides did go down to 22 inches of vacuum. So I lost a little bit of vacuum because I had to evacuate my gauges, but that's fine. So I have my vacuum port closed, my refrigerant port closed. The refrigerant hose is connected to my nitrogen bottle. nitrogen bottle is on. So as I open up this refrigerant port, it's going to fill the system with nitrogen. Now, I don't want to charge from the low side. I want to charge from the high side. And I want it to go through the expansion valve and equalize the system. And then it may not fill it all the way. And then once it gets to that point, I'll open up the low side and we'll let it equalize and stabilize before we start our leak test. So you can see here we have 75 pounds on the high side. Our low side is starting to come up. I have the regulator on the bottle set to 100 right now. I'm gonna actually bump that up. I'd like to end up around 200. So the system has been sitting, uh, even with the refrigerant valve closed for about five minutes. Um, the pressures have stabilized. I'm just going to make sure that everything's closed all the way. This gauge set's kind of nice because it has a tightness test built in. I don't have to remember what my pressures are. So I'm just going to hold the tightness button. I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to start a test. We can see it counting time here. And then my pressure differential is going to be here. So whatever I started with to whatever I am now, this will count up or down. Um, sometimes you'll see a vehicle after you put the nitrogen in there, the pressure will go up. And that's because there's a little bit of trapped refrigerant in there that when we purge this nitrogen in there, it actually warms up that refrigerant enough for that refrigerant to expand um, or it boils out of the oil. But this one, it's pretty stable. We'll, uh, I'm going to go run to lunch. We'll just let this keep running. I come back, I'll see if it's dropped. If it hasn't dropped, then more than likely we don't have a leak and there's possibility that the refrigerant was low on charge because they didn't charge it properly or some of that refrigerant blew out if they have a restriction on the high side or the fan wasn't working 
something like that, which we do see a little bit of debris in front of that condenser that I'm concerned about. Um, you know, with a little 50 hours of mowing, that can happen. So maybe these owners need to, you know, clean that stuff out a little more often. But we'll see what happens after lunch and go from there. So I needed to move the tractor as soon as I got back from lunch. Uh, I was blocking another technician in. They needed to get a waiter car in so they had to get what, what they were working on out. Um, so I unhooked my gauges. We lost like two PSI in 45 minutes. I left the pressure in the system. So once we find out if we have an authorization or parts coming or something like that, um, we'll get it back in. We'll hook the gauges back up, see where our pressure is at. Now, naturally, we're going to have a little bit of pressure drop. So I'm planning on using just my standalone digital gauges, um, the very low loss when you connect them. So I'm expecting we'll see a couple of pounds of difference from me disconnecting the old gauges and connecting the new gauges, um, but we shouldn't see anything drastic. If we do see something drastic, then it means that we do have a leak. And once we know we have a leak, we'll have to find that leak. Um, it could be O-rings on the compressor. There was a lot of oil on that one line. Hopefully it's not up in the top of the tractor cabin where the evaporator is. But most of those tractors have a, like a dust filter up above and maybe on the outside that we can remove to get down to it. But that's only going to show up if it's on the evaporator. If it's on the expansion valve, that's actually mounted outside of that chamber. So we may actually have to undo the screws, lift the roof off, which isn't a big deal. Um, it's just something that takes an extra you know, 15, 20 minutes to remove it, inspect it, put it back on if we don't find an issue. Now, I remember last time it came in, the roof was off and I charged it up and I was just kind of glancing around while I was ev evacuating that system. And I noticed that there was a bunch of dye up in the top, but they told me they changed the expansion valve. So my assumption is they, uh, they may have had a lot of oil drain out. There may have still been some pressure in the system when they undid the line and it sprayed that stuff all over the place. So we will, you know, cross that bridge when it comes. Um, hopefully we'll get the approval. I don't know if we're going to get the approval on the condenser. It kind of sounded like they were only going to cover the compressor, the belt and the refrigerant plus the labor. Um, if, if our estimate is out of the realm of what they're willing to pay, then we will just evacuate it. We'll send it down the road to the dealer. They can come pick it back up. They can do the repair, which they've already done twice. And then they'll bring it back to me. I'll evacuate it again, charge it back up. And I won't have any way of knowing if they put the right amount of oil in, um, if they took any precautions, was there metal in the lines? I won't know any of that. So it's not something that I can guarantee. And even if we're not doing the condenser, which I recommended, then we can't guarantee the repair anyways. And they'll have to sign off on that saying that they understand that there is no, uh, no warranty or guarantee that the compressor is going to last if there's debris in the system. But once we get uh, more approval on that or parts, we'll get it back in and I'll try and show you guys a video of that compressor replacement, evacuating it and then testing the system. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and click the bell. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.